Dibiat, and so on, okay, to the Sabaeans. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there you go. So now you've got that triad. Let's have a quick look at Muhammad's children, Abdalat and Abdmanaf. Alat, we've just discovered, is the consort of the moon god. Yeah. And this was, so mm -hmm. Muhammad had children by Khadija, okay? So he had children by Khadija, and the children, the, his sons were named Abdal Uzza and Abdmanaf. Both of these are pagan Arabian deities. The slave of Uzza, that deity, yes. and the slave of Manaf. The star god. Manaf mm -hmm. is the star god. Wow. We just mentioned the star god. Yeah, and, and let's not forget his father as well, the slave of Allah. The slave of Allah. And we've mm -hmm. discovered in the inscriptions, Allah is al-Makkah. Exactly. <laughs> right? So understand, so now you've got, now why was Muhammad naming his children after pagan gods? Mm -hmm. Unless he was worshipping them. Exactly. Good question, right. Lloyd. Great question. You incorporate the names of your gods into names. Like, you know, th this is what you do. So, so Muhammad's pagan family, Hashim ibn Abd Manaf, okay, was the great grandfather of Muhammad. So he worshipped slave of Manaf, Manaf the star god, yeah. <laughs> right? So he was, he was of the Banu Hashim clan of the Quraysh. Hashim was the son of Abd Manaf. Oh my golly. His father was Abd Manaf too. <laughs> yes. Right? And Abdul Muttalib was the first Meccan to introduce the practice of dyeing your hair with henna to his fellow tribespeople, where he True. learned it on a visit to Yemen. Yemen. Okay, okay. So he brought back practices from Yemen. So he was, I mean, even back then, this is, this is before that, like they were going back and forth. This area was very close knit. You were able to travel, bring back practices, cross culture, yeah. mixing. Yeah, so correct. There was a lot of cross-cultural mixing. And notice in this cartoon, they've actually got this cow horn. Notice this cow horn shape, this this moon shape here, the crescent. But this is the cow horn. Yeah, yeah, I actually, see that. You know, hold on. So yeah, I've got the cow horn. Let me find this. Um, uh, and Louis, just a general question as well. Yes. Do you not find it strange that like Muslims don't pick up on the fact that Muhammad's father was called Abdullah as well? And... Like, do they do they never sit and ponder on the point that why was Allah kind of there in, in that jah time of Jahiliya? Why would his father be called such a name? The well, you know what happened God. to the last people who asked questions, right? <laughs> they were turned into rats. They were Jews who were turned into rats. <laughs> were they you don't actually? Want to be into a rat, do you? I definitely don't want to be turned into a rat or a monkey or anything else that comes with you don't question turn questions. Like that. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I just so, find that such a like simple point to just think about and ponder on for a second, but people are, you know, it's almost like that the, that the goggles are on so strong to refute paganism anywhere you potentially see it or find it. Yeah. So yeah. So Manaf. Well, I mean, does it make sense? The the that. Uh, yes. I, I, yeah. So Manaf. So guys, if you have questions, please ask. I might miss them, but if there's anything I've missed, um, just uh, let us know. Manaf was one of the greatest deities of Mecca, Al Tabri. Okay, Al Tabri is telling us. I guess Al Tabri knew what he was talking about. <laughs> Manaf is the name of a deity of ancient Arabia. He was called the Exalted, which described Athar Venus at its zenith. Okay, and it's an epithet of the sun. So hold on. So from the same root is derived Tanuf, that which climbs high in the firmament. Firmament. So this is connected. So this is a star deity connected with the sun. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. So now you've got this this linkage again, right? Yeah. This is from the Encyclopedia of Islam, just... volume six. Yeah. Sorry. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. Volume six. Sorry. Go ahead. Page three forty nine. Uh, I was just going to say that goes back to um that that uh, bit of text you showed us from the um the study as well that was done at UCL that the thesis sorry that was basically mm -hmm. saying that Islam can also be traced back to a whole astrological religion in itself. Uh, because here we see that and also interesting because Allah in Islam is also called the exalted one at various points so yep yep so is Abmanaf one of the four sons and Kamar the moon okay so just again in Tabri they, these names are religious names they go way back okay so so these names go back to that region uh I'm gonna skip uh, actually this might be interesting I forgot about this so Herodotus, the Greek historian from 450 BC, tells us the North Arabians had a god and goddess named Oratal and Alila. 
Oratal is simply a corruption of Allah or Allah Ta'ala, God Most High, Allah Most High, Allah Ta'ala, right? Yes. Allah has been around in pagan Arabia long before Muhammad. So Sheikh oh. Ibrahim al Qatan, in a lecture given by blah, blah, blah in Vienna, said the religion of Arabia can be traced to the epigraphic and inscription evidence back to 5,500 BC or 1,000 years before Muhammad. He said that God's name Baal Shaman, Baal Shaman happened to be in Petra, Dut mm. Samawi, Rahman, which they got from Syria, Persia, and the pagan Kabbalist Jews. And don't forget, Rahman was also the one of the, was the name for God, for the Christians, for the Arabian oh, yeah. Christians. Correct. Right? The merciful. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, and in fact, remember the inscription spoke of Rahman, and then you had, and of his, his and of the Christ, his son, and of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Right? I showed those inscriptions, and, and that goes back to the time of, um, uh, who's the guy with the elephants? Um, Abraha. Abraha, right? yes. So Allah was the highest deity. His name was inscribed in stone by Jewish traders along the Arabian trade routes. These paganized Jews also called Allah Rahman, while the Arabs called him Allah. So they were fighting over the identity of Allah or whatever. So these sacred concepts such as Allah, the Kaaba with its black stone running around the Kaaba seven times, climbing Mount Arafat, as well as the God named Rahman and stoning Satan, which Muhammad got by revelation, was salvaged yeah. from ancient pagans in Arabia. Wow, wow, we okay. <laughs> this is madness. Right. So now this is called the Tombs and Moon Temple of Hureda or Hadramaut. This is by G. Catton Thompson. So this is reports of the Research Committee, Society of, of the Antiquaries of London.